Recording in progress. Hello and welcome to our Weber County Commission meeting on this the Tuesday, the 27th uh, of uh, February 2024. It's 10 o'clock. We've got a full quorum here with Commissioner Bolos seated to my immediate right, Commissioner Frohr to my left. Uh, we uh, will start our meeting today with the Pledge of Allegiance given by uh, Christy Bingham. Our invocation this morning will then be given by William George Ross. And our thought of the day will be given by Commissioner Sharon Bolos. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for Our dear Heavenly Father, as we come before this commission meeting, we come with grateful hearts and thankful for the many blessings that thou has blessed us with and given us. Grateful for especially this opportunity we have to live in such a great county and for all those who serve with integrity to not only help lead us, but guide us and protect us. And special thankfulness towards all those law enforcement and first responders that help keep us safe and meet the needs that we need uh, that we can enjoy the lives that we live we are grateful heavenly father for the moisture we've received and pray thou continue to bless us with it that that we may have the the necessary water and sources that we need that we can thrive in our community we do love the Heavenly Father. We're thankful again for all those dedicated people, uh, both citizens and elected officials and those who serve in this county uh, and all the great things that they're doing to help us prosper in this, this great area. Uh, pray that thou might continue to bless our efforts and especially during this meeting that the things that are conducted uh, will be able to benefit us as we move forward and grow and are strengthened as individuals and, and as citizens. We, again, are thankful for this and ask for thy blessings to be with us at this time and do so in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. I'm up. I just finished a book that was a really quick read and packed with information. It's called QBQ, The Question Behind the Question. And the author is John G. Miller. Um, he talks about what we can do in our situations to make things better. And just because he's more eloquent than I am, I'm going to read a little clip of the synopsis. The lack of personal accountability is a problem that has resulted in an epidemic of blame, victim thinking, complaining, and procrastination. No organization or individual can successfully compete in the marketplace, achieve goals and objectives, provide outstanding service, engage in exceptional teamwork, or develop people without personal accountability. And the chapters are really short. He goes over a lot of different things that we can do. And most of it has to do with eliminating blame. And in almost every situation we can, that's not going our way, we can probably find someone to blame. And that's human nature is that was his job. That was her responsibility. This didn't happen because of so-and-so. And while that might be the case, uh, the encouragement from the book is, what can I do to make it better? When my kids were growing up, I used to always say to them when they came to me with a problem, be a problem solver. You can't change the past. You can't change what someone else has done, but you can change how you react. And in most cases, you can make the situation better. And it's a lot more than just, um, than just words. It's really action. So I want to share one of my favorite quotes. This is kind of funny, and it's, it's not entirely related to what I just shared, but, but it has to do with taking action instead of just having a plan and hoping things go well. He says, up to the mountaintop go the executives for a senior management retreat. For three days, they debate the critical issues, filling flip charts with brightly colored ink. Finally, mission, vision, and values in hand, they return to the valley below where the people wait to receive the stone tablets, which have magically transformed into little laminated pocket cards for men to sit on and women to stuff into their briefcases. So it's more than just a plan. It's, it's taking what we want to accomplish, whether it's in an organization, in our families, um, in religious settings, wherever, we're, wherever we have an impact or associate with people, 
It's more than just a plan that we sit on in our pocket or stuff in a briefcase. It's the action that we take as an individual to better every situation that we're in. Um, I recommend the book to anyone. It's a really quick read. I have a brother who works for a company that um, has a, a book report due every month for their employees. They assign a book for all the employees to read. And then they have to do a, a book report on it. And I sent him this. I said, this is a one-hour book that would really benefit your organization. So um, I really enjoyed that. QBQ, The Question Behind the Question by John G. Miller. Thank you, Commissioner. Great, uh, great thought. And that's, you've always uh, been one to accept responsibility for your actions and take and be accountable. And so uh, aside from all the other qualities you have, thank you. Okay, well, now is the time on our agenda, item number E, ECHO, which is uh, items related to public comments or items on the agenda. Are there anything on the, agenda, on the agenda that the public would like to comment on? You can come forward if you'd spend three minutes on that. You may address the commission in person. You can do that now. Any online, Christy? Hearing none, commissioners will then move to item F, which is our consent calendar or our consent items. Number one is a request for approval of warrants 101-100 through and including 101-203. 482-490 through and including 42705 and number 340 in the amount of $2,691,431.66. Item number two is a request for approval of purchase orders in the amount of $501,115.66. And item number three is a request of the warrants and the purchase orders. We'll go to Mr. Lynn Taylor, the very capable Lynn Taylor, for an explanation on those items. Thank you, Commissioner. The largest of these 24 warrants uh, for almost 2.7 million, 40% or 1.1 million went to payroll clearing for medical insurance and disability payments, 16% or 426,000 to the jail for health services, supplies and contracted services, 9% or 254,000 to the housing authority for housing payments and 8% or 225,000 to Weber Human Services for human services contributions. And we had eight purchase orders totaling just over 500,000. Largest of these 80% or 400,000 was for asphalt and 7% or 34,000 of the transfer station for parts, bin stock, safety equipment, and supplies. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Commissioners, questions, comments on any of those? None, None. for me. None. Thank you. We'll move on then. Item number four is a request for approval of the new beer licenses. Item five is a request for approval of new beer li new business licenses. The aforementioned one was beer licenses. Item six is a request for approval of retirement agreements. Mine between Weber County and the following individuals. Miss Jennifer Graham, Deborah Barrow, and Chad McCrary. The things you get to do from this seat. <laughs> Item number seven is a request for approval of an agreement by between Weber County and Jason Knoll for the services as audio designer for the production of Hunchback of Notre Dame, which was, it ended last night. This is gonna be ratification. I wanna make that clear. Um, what a phenomenal performance that was. Item eight is a request for approval of the change order number zero one and associated with Waterman Corporation contract for the construction of the Weber Morgan Children's Justice Center. Item nine is a request for approval of an agreement by between Weber County and Wasatch Front Junior High School Rodeo Club to hold their, their rodeo at the Golden Spike Event Center. Item 10 is a request for approval of an agreement, of an agreement by between Weber County and, and uh, Shay Lynn Haviland to manage the stalls and the RVs during the Icebreaker Rodeo at the Golden Spike Event Center. Item 11 is a request for approval of revisions to the Weber County Policy 18.1. That's the Weber County Policy and Procedures on the Use of Rental Car and Weber Center Facilities, of rentals of the Weber County Facilities. And item 12 is a request for approval of the minutes from the February 20th, 2024 Commission meeting. The last one, item 13, is a request for approval of real property lease agreement by between Weber County and Staker Parsons Company, which is out to the area around the roads department. Commissioners, uh, questions with regards to any of the items presented in item F, our consent items. 
Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve consent items F1 through 13. Second. I have a motion and a second. I'll place that motion for vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. We'll then move on to our action items. Commissioners, this first action item is a request for approval of the resolution 092024, the Weaver Board of Commissioners, establishing a Criminal Justice Coordinating Council. Our presentation will be to today, uh, Phil Reese, uh, not Brian Barron, but uh, Mr. Reese or Lieutenant Captain Chief. 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 Thank you. Phil. I had to go through all the things in my mind. Kind of like promoting you. I've got all these kids back here, and I've gone through the kids <laughs> like a, so. Captain, thank you Chief. very much, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. I Chairman got you, Chief Harvey. Um, I. <laughs> So first, I apologize for disappointing you and not being Brian Bear, and I, I share that disappointment with, Your hair's with you better. all. Your hair's much better. I don't know. He had a pretty epic beard going on from what I gather, so disappointing for us all. However, um, for a presentation of this resolution, I feel like I'm very much the cleanup hitter for this. Uh, Commissioner Bolos obviously started this last year while she was chairperson of the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, um, and then... Um, Mr. Barron drafted all of the legalese that's presented. Um, I've been part of the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council and uh, um, bringing it to fruition for a number of years now uh, on behalf of the Sheriff's Office. Uh, I'm very excited for this um, advent of entering into a new realm of teamwork and really coordinate, coordination within our county. Um, Weber County continues to be a leader in their coalition work, uh, in particular with criminal involved individuals. So with that, the, the resolution's before you and that's all I have to present. Great. Commissioner Bolos, being that this is in your portfolio, do you have any questions or comments? Just a comment that uh, as Chief Reese pointed out, it's it's a great council that coordinates efforts uh, for individuals in our community who are justice involved, and uh, it's not my wheelhouse. And when I took this assignment in January of last year, there was so much I didn't know, and there's still so much that I don't know. But watching this group come together to meet and um, and talk about how to help these individuals has just been a phenomenal experience. There's a lot of passion in that group, and a a lot of care and concern for individuals in our community, and I just appreciate that. I still just kind of sit back and watch the world and go around because, you know, it's, it's a lot of things that I don't understand, but things that they understand, and there are great people on that council, and those individuals are being approved as part of this this resolution. So I'm, I'm happy to be able to be moving forward on, on making this official, and, and from what I understand, we're leading out. I felt at times that, that we were maybe disorganized, and and found out that no, we actually, though we may still be organizing ourselves, we're eons ahead of other counties in trying to wrap our minds around this and, and what needs to be done here. So again, Weber County leading out has been good to see, so. Thank you. Commissioner Frohr, comments or questions? Question if I might, Mr. Chair. Please. So Chief, this is a resolution establishing the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council. I thought this was set up a couple of years ago. I attended some meetings when this was set up. So is this a, are we reorganizing? Is it a different um, vision than what was originally established? Same, same vision moving forward is just actually putting it into a resolution and making it an actual document rather than just a hypothesis. Uh, oh. Rather than just a group of people getting together and so it was never official. So what I'm, you're telling me is I attended meetings that weren't official. So Commis you can't get that back, Commissioner Froer. There was legislation oh a year or two ago requiring counties to establish a criminal justice coordinating council, and they were required to do that last year and submit their first report. So uh, many counties have at, they're still in the process of doing that. So I get it. No, I, it makes sense. I knew the legislation came about. So. Okay, I like the idea. Well, so so what you're saying is that you helped clear the trees so that yeah. we could get the ground ready to plant. Yeah, I guess you could say that, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. With that, I'll <laughs> accept a, 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 a motion for uh, this resolution. A motion to approve resolution 09-2024. Second. I have a motion and a second. Mr. Brandt. 
Roll call vote for resolution 09-2024. Commissioner Floor. Aye. Commissioner Bolos. Aye. Chair Harvey. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate that. Just when you thought uh, we were done with resolutions, the oh, Cass, wow. Phenomenal job with the, what, the hunchback. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Before you go ahead, this is, commissioners, this is a re uh, request for approval of resolution 10 2024 for the Weber County Commissioners, Weber County appointing members to the Ogden Musical Theater Advisory Board. The incredibly capable Cassie Bybee. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm so glad that you enjoyed Hunchback. It was definitely a stage filled with fabulous, talented musicians and talented, talented singers and actors. It was a beautiful show. Around me last night is that as the actors came up from that pit, era pit the orchestra pit, and it was just wow. I mean, it, to start things off was a wow. It was yeah, super good. Well, thank you. Thank you for supporting and your continued support, Commissioners. I, I certainly appreciate that. So in this resolution, there are some that um, have been on our board and they are just renewing. They have, um, you can serve up to two terms on the board. So there's some um, on your list. Kent Corbin and Sean Myers came to us. They actually started, they've been with us a year, but I, when I was back looking through records, we realized that they had never, their names had never been presented to the commission here. So we're doing a little bit of backtracking there. Um, they, the, Kent is actually serving as our chair this year and Sean Myers is our vice chair of the, of the board. Then, there, then we had a few people that had had to leave the board, some of them for personal and family situations and different things, and some of their, their terms ended. And so they left um, the board, and so that gave us four new positions on the board. And so those, Louis Lopez and Nina Doxy, and the um, Andrea DeMille and Amberlene Bauman, the, those are the names that have been presented and their resumes have been gone through and their applications to be board members and things, and then they were voted on by the board, and now I'm presenting those new uh, board members to you. Um, th just a little side note on that, two of these board members actually attended um, some of our, uh, th they attended Music Man, and they approached us after attending in the audience and saying, how do I get involved with OMT? Um, is there any way I can help with this program? And so we said, yeah, you know, we'll let you know when some available positions come available and things. And so we've touched back with them and they sent in their resumes and applied to be board members. So it's always a good sign when your people in your audience want to know how they can become involved. Then lastly, the others on the bottom, this Karen, um, Karen Bristol and Ernest and Pam um, Higginson, Jolene Zito, they have been serving on the board um, for several years now, but they're up for their second term. Their first term, some of them, because when we started the board, if you remember uh, Chris Crockett, we drew names out, and so some of them only served like a year, and so they, so we've let them serve a second full term, and now they're coming into that full second term of four years. So that's why you have those different categories of, of names and different dates that they would, because they serve for a four-year term, so and then they fall off, and you know, so they can serve up to two, two four-year terms, and that's why a couple of them will actually serve nine years. If they've if they've had that first that first year it wasn't a full term, so that's it wasn't a full term. So we've allowed them to up for another term if they would so like to. Commissioners, this uh, board has done oh, I've done a phenomenal job, especially as uh, we're in the midst of our centennial celebration. Uh, many of them they're spending a lot of time unpaid, but just. But we're getting millions of dollars of value. But more than that, we're getting even more millions of of thoughts and, and care. Uh, just they they care and they're phenomenal people. We're we're just grateful to have them. And our very own Ernie Gonzalez has been great on that. He's but I've worked with Ernie now for going on twenty going on twenty years, Ernie. <sighs> Just been a giver the whole time. Sure, appreciate your help. But all of them, the Jolene, all of them, just it's been great. And it's nice to have 
Sean and to have the others there with us there as well. Mm -hmm. So, commissioners, any questions regarding this resolution and, and or questions? No, nope. you ready for a motion? Please. I move to approve resolution 10 2024. We have a motion? And I'll second that with a comment. Please. I just wanted to uh, tell Cassie that it's an amazing performance. I agree with Commissioner Chair Harvey that uh, anybody that missed that really missed out. Uh, and I know that your board takes their work seriously. So and these names, I know a good chair of them. I think you'll have a great board. Thank you. Thank you. We do. We have a board that's very passionate and very influential, influential, influential people in the community. And um, I'm grateful to, to them and their their advice and their passion for OMT and what they bring um, to this program. We couldn't do it without them. I mean, they have a lot of connections and they're there to support fully. And I really do appreciate their time and effort that they put forth in serving the community. Okay. Well, you know, and her name's, while her name's not on there, I also want to give a special shout out today to Mari Tarbox. You know, the two of you, we are so fortunate to have the two of you here in our community because what's going on over there is just absolutely phenomenal. Thank you again so much. Well, thank Kat. you. So we have a motion and a second for resolution 10-2024. I'll place that motion for vote, Mr. Brandt. Roll call vote for resolution 10-2024. Commissioner Frohr? Aye. Commissioner Bolos? Aye. Chair Harvey? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank, 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 thank you. you. Well, here we go. Our ambassador is going to come to make a presentation to us next. This is a request for approval of a policy establishing guidelines for the use of small unmanned aircraft systems or drones by county departments other than the sheriff's office. Cortland Erickson, welcome. Thank you, commissioners. The county has um, not had a policy governing drones up until this time. The sheriff's office has one. And when one of the departments I work with uh, approached us, uh, may, may have been about a year ago, about the idea of using some drones, uh, we started looking into that. And Sean Bryan, one of our prosecutors, has been instrumental in this. He has had a lot of involvement with the sheriff's office, working with their folks in making sure their drone program is operating properly. It turns out that there are licensing requirements from the, uh, the federal government, the FAA, and also um, other things, liability issues, things that we wanted to make sure we covered appropriately. And so Sean worked with me and we were able to put together a policy that would cover departments other than the sheriff's office since they have their own. And Essentially, it would require um, a department that wants to have a drone program to get authorization for it, to have a, a program written up, to have people who have the right licensure, licensing, um, to be able to make sure it works correctly and to follow certain procedures for um, reducing liability, making sure we comply with data retention requirements and, and so forth. And, so the policy that is before you is intended to cover all those things. And I'm happy to try to answer any questions you may have. Commissioner's questions for Mr. Erickson? None for me. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the policy, uh, UAS Drone Use Policy 27.1. We have a motion? Second. In a second, I'll place that motion for vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Erickson. Thank you. Item number four is a request for approval of an agreement by between Weber County and Randy Marriott Construction for the installation of the 4,000 North Box Culvert installation. Ashley Tolman. Mr. Tolman, welcome. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, thank you for your time. Before you is a contract between Weber County and Randy Marriott Construction for the installation of the Box Culvert project on 4,000 North near uh, Smith and Edwards. We went through the purchasing department to uh, put out this project for bids. We received 12 bids. Uh, Randy Marriott Construction was the low bid at uh, just over 243,000. And so this is a project to install the box culvert. You'll recall a month ago, we came with a contract for the fabrication of that structure which is underway. They've ordered the rebar and that'll be delivered soon, kind of in an effort to fast track this project. We separated those two. And so this contracts for the 
construction site work, the installation of that box culvert. Um, we will use budget money that was allocated from the flood control funds for the payment of this contract. And uh, that's all I have. If, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Any questions for Ashley? No. No, I think this, or this is in your portfolio. If you have any uh, comments there, well, I just uh, we know this is a much needed. We went through the flood stage last year. That was a that was a problem area for us. This will alleviate hopefully a good share of what we might have in the future. Though we don't expect to have the flood concerns this year as we had last year. But it's great to have this in for future generations. And uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I would be happy to make a motion. I appreciate that. Thank you. Approve the agreement by and between Weber County and Randy Marriott Construction for the installation of the 4000 North Box Culvert installation. And with that, Ashley, just wanted to uh, reiterate, this was a bid project. There was 12 bids submitted. Marriott Construction was the low bidder. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Great. And now we have a motion. Second. And a second. I'll place that motion for vote. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Ashley. Hey, thank you, Commissioners. Okay, great. Our next uh, presentation, Commissioners, our Chief, Phil Reese. This is a request for approval of a memorandum of an agreement by and between Weber County and the Ogden School District for the Weber County Sheriff's Office to provide high school educational opportunities to the incarcerated population. So, Commissioners, I have the privilege of introducing Corporal Pete Anderson. He is our supervisor over our inmate services program. Uh, and I am going to take this opportunity to brag about him and give him some commendations for what an exceptionally good job he's doing leading out in that uh, very important area in within our facility. Uh, Corporal Anderson took the opportunity to uh, be assigned to the inmate services program a couple, well, more than a couple months ago now, but he's been swinging away really hard. He's constantly knocking out projects um, and he's really moving us forward. Uh, as as you all, all recall, uh, the pandemic hit our facility intensely. Uh, we had to do, we had to pause a lot of programs and over the years as the pandemic raged on, a lot of our volunteer programs um, disappeared. People made different decisions in their life. Um, and Anderson has done a really spectacular job of reinventing some of those programs, bringing volunteers back into our facility um, and just being a really exceptional leader within our organization. So with that, Corporal Anderson. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners, for taking the time. Um, so I've been with Inmate Services for about six months now. When I started, we had um, church services on Sunday and every once in a while we had LDS 12-step, uh, which is a recovery program. Um, from that point, we have now um, Inside Out Dads, which is an anger recovery program. We have AA. We're working on bringing back two or three new church services. Um, we have vocational rehab starting next week. Um, we are trying as hard as we can to give gentlemen and the ladies as much opportunity to leave the jail and fulfill their lives as, as they need to. Um, I'm here today to propose that we restart high school in the jail. In the past, before COVID, we successfully mitigated high school and we got a lot of people graduated and one step up once they left the jail. Um, I think everybody's goal in the jail is to help with the recidivism and to help these people move past their their criminal histories and i think that high school will be a great step in in the right direction um, i have organized with ogden city uh, school district to have them come in and teach two classes um, both classes one is high school the second class is esl which will also provide a language um, language education for our participants um, Ogden City has received a grant for the high school um, teaching for the equipment and such, so it's not gonna cost Weber County to uh, pay for the program. It's only gonna cost the amount of time and energy for us to provide it. Thank you, Corporal Anderson. Appreciate your presentation and thanks for your work.
Thank you. Commissioner Bolos, this being in your portfolio, any comments or questions regarding this? Just the comment that it, I think it's such great work and, and, and a lot of effort that's going into investing in these individuals who we hope can, can leave jail and, and get back into society and be contributors. So thank you so much. Thank you for your efforts in that. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Commissioner Frohr, anything? I just say it's a great resource to help these people that they come out with uh, an education higher than what they went in with. And I think we owe that to them as um, as members of this community. So appreciate your efforts no, thank on you that, so Corporal. Much. Thank you so much. Commissioners, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make an, a motion to Approve the memorandum of agreement by and between Weber County and the Ogden School District as presented by Corporal Anderson. We have a motion. And I'll second that. I'll, I'll place that motion for vote. Then all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioners. And thanks to those others uh, that have joined us today. Appreciate your being here to support. Item six on our agenda, Commissioners, is a resolution. Mr. Ross, if you'd come back up to the... The pulpit here. Uh, it's a resolution 11 2024 approving the interlocal co cooperative agreement by and between Weber County and all the cities of Weber County, with the exception of Huntsville and West Haven City. Mr. Ross, go ahead. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, as you know, we've been working on this, these contracts, and this resolution for quite some time. And so maybe just for the public's sake, it's a uh, you know, Weber County has been co collaborating with the local cities on interlocal agreement that provides a guaranteed waste stream to the Weber County Transfer Station. The agreement allows the transfer station to know how much municipal solid waste to expect, which leads to better budgeting and operation decisions. Uh, the agreement states that each city will deliver all of its curbside mun municipal solid waste exclusively to the Weber County Transfer Station, and Weber County will continue to own and operate the transfer station for the agreement's duration. The first term of the agreement will run uh, from the approval date through the end of 2024 and automatically renew for terms of two years, each for a maximum of 12 years through 2036. Either party can terminate uh, with a six month notice. And so, uh, like you mentioned, it has we majority of the cities have have uh, agreed and signed their portion of these, which is Far West, Harrisville, Hooper, Merritt, Slaterville, North Ogden, Ogden, Plain City, Pleasant View, Riverdale, Roy, South Ogden, Uinta, and Washington Terrace. So it's been a great, I mean, it's, it was wonderful. It's been a long time coming and appreciate the support of these cities. So. Mr. Frohr, this is in your portfolio. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First off, I just want to thank uh, Mr. Ross and Mr. Wilkinson, who's not here. This has been, as Bill said, this has been a long time coming. Really, this was just a necessary financial move and an operations move for Weber County. We, we couldn't, as a county in good faith, continue to operate a transfer station and provide these services to the cities in our county without some type of guarantee that, uh, that those waste would continue to come to Weber County transfer station. And that's what these contracts do. I think with the exception of West Haven City and Huntsville City, this includes all those. Yes. Um, and so the agreement, as Mr. Ross said, is, has a six month um, termination clause. I don't imagine that will ever come into effect until something changes drastically in our economy or the operations of that transfer station. But um, again, this just ensures the uh, taxpayers of Weber County that um, we're continuing to focus efforts on providing these services to the cities. Uh, but we, you know, want them to be good partners and understand that we need their cooperation in order to continue to do that. And with that, the rates will be set for a period of time. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. So the rates will be set um, for those cities that haven't, I might make this mention, haven't signed this, that, um, and it was talked about at the WACOG a number of months ago, that that rate uh, it, for those that don't sign on will probably be increasing at some point in time. So I think we've I think we've expressed that to the two cities that uh, that haven't signed. Is that correct, Bill? That is correct. Yes. So, with that, Mr. Chair, I'm happy to make a motion. Uh, I'll accept that motion. I'd move approval of resolution 11-2024. Second. I have a motion and a second before I place that motion for vote. Bill, this is a long, long time coming. I hope people understand, you know, water, sewer, 
Garbage is one of those other necessary things that we have to get rid of. It's a necessary service. While it doesn't appear on most people's tax notice, on their property tax notice, with doing this, it helps maintain a lower fee level to their homes. These fees in other areas uh, could be immediately 20% higher than what they are now. When we started this program, there are some in Weber County, many in unincorporated Weber County, who enjoy a 50% discount from where their rates were or could be. So this is really impactful to them, although it doesn't get talked about enough. They just expect that can to be emptied every week, but, but they could be paying double what they do now. And keep in mind that in many other cities, not just in Utah, but outside the state, this waste collection fee is double, triple, and sometimes quadruple from what it is here. So all they have to do is go somewhere else outside and to be able to, to see or appreciate what we take for granted and enjoy every week as that truck comes by and empties. And so this is a big deal. This is a really big deal. And for those paying $50 a month, we're talking about their fees being $600 higher than what they could be every year. So there's, it's hard to say, well, you're saving $600 a year, but they are. So it's, it's pretty good. Mr. Brandt, go ahead for that roll call vote. Roll call vote for resolution 11-2024, Commissioner Frohr. Aye. Commissioner Bolos. Aye. Chair Harvey. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Commissioners, uh, now is the time we go to item number H, like hotel on our agenda. Uh, Commissioner comments. None for me, Mr. Chair. Thank you for asking. No. I do want to say uh, what a privilege it is to work with you. And for all those who are listening now or may be listening later, I really want to thank the efforts that have gone in, especially behind the scenes with Steve Ogden Jr. over here, free labor to our legislator. <laughs> we've been, uh, I think we've been very effective at the, with the legislature this year. Um, one of the key things about our position is being able to be responded to. And we hear, we hear back, and, and I've just been getting text messages through the meeting from our legislators about different things and it's it's working out very well for Weber County and so uh, I really appreciate the work for for those of us here on the dais but sitting in the, seated in the audience and others who are not here but have worked on behalf of the betterment of Weber County and their cities the districts that are associated water sewer fire police all those things we we've, we've been very lucky we were represented by good people and we're lucky to have them so with that uh, I'll have to entertain a motion for item number I. Motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion to second to adjourn. All, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.